How many pills are out there these days? I think I've lost track. The black pill, the white pill, the red pill, the purple pill. Those are probably the biggest ones. Well, here's another pill, the personality pill. I don't know if people say that too frequently, but I'm going to use it in this context. The personality pill. Personality pill is pretty brutal for a number of reasons. And we have to start at the basis of the problem of people's misapprehension of the personality pill. And that is the below the neckline fallacy. There is a continuous strain of thought that just permeates all of our society and pretty much something that every normie thinks. And that is that when it comes to everything in your head, your brain, your mind, and everything that projects, that's somehow malleable. It's somehow detached from everything else. Sure, you're only five foot five, but your mind and your personality are, well, in your own hands somehow, right? You might have a permanent limp, but no, you can do so much more with your mind. The reality is, gentlemen, that for the most part, the physical is viewed as real, and things sitting inside your brain are viewed as well, I don't really know, to be perfectly honest. Ethereal, intangible, but that's where the miscomprehension, the lack of understanding comes from when it comes to the personality. How many times have we heard again and again things regarding changing your personality? Like you might be short, you might be fat, you might be dumpy, you might not be very attractive, but work on that personality. Now, one thing that I've always found curious about this proposition is that it seems to me far more obvious that you could work on your body, especially if you're overweight. You could do more to affect change in your appearance regarding your body than you could ever do regarding things contained within your mind. And change your clothing. You can wear elevated shoes if you're too short. You can change your haircut. You can lose weight. You can build muscles. There are a number of limited things you can do to change your quote-unquote physical presentation and appearance. But when it comes to the mind, that's a whole other story in my humble opinion. There isn't a whole lot of overlap. Why then do people think it's so easy to change the way you are in terms of your personality? Well, the reason for this is pretty simple. We still don't understand the fundamental components of the mind. We know your brain is basically your mind. But we don't know how these neuronal arrangements inside your brain lead to different outcomes in terms of presentation and in terms of personality regarding others, regarding yourself. So it's easy to assume, hey, just change your personality, bro. Become funnier, bro. Well, the personality pill is pretty blackpilling, all things considered. Because personality is one of the most stable things out there when it comes to psychometric data over a lifetime. Meaning your personality isn't going to change a whole lot. The personality you're born with is pretty much the personality you're stuck with. At the most extreme ends, you can see some serious differences in terms of personality between people. You might know somebody who's really neurotic versus somebody who is the exact opposite people who never worry about anything versus people who worry about the slightest thing. All my life, for example, I've been above average in neuroticism. I'm the type of guy who checks his mailbox almost every day in the hope that I'm not going to receive any news because, as you know, no news is good news. And I try to work on that over my lifetime, and I've gotten slightly better, but it's been an absolute minimal, almost invisible improvement, all things considered. I was born fairly neurotic, and that's the way I'm going to stay. And you add to that the fact that heritability increases with age, and I am rapidly approaching 50, I am not going to be changing my personality anytime soon. But even when I was 18, 19, 20, I wasn't going to change my personality very much either, because personality is very stable. It's one of those things that psychometrics and psychologists have measured pretty efficiently, we don't know the exact details of what goes into personality, but how you are, 
whether you're neurotic or not neurotic, whether you're stubborn or not stubborn, whether you have an aggressive personality or a non-aggressive personality, all this stuff is pretty much pre-programmed. And yes, there's some interaction with the environment, but it's at least 50% heritable. And for many personality traits, it's significantly higher. Really bad ones, such as schizophrenia, it's about 70% heritable. So you can imagine, if you have any knowledge on this subject, to listen to the malarkey people put out there about oh, just change your personality. And your personality does count. Sure, the halo effect is really, really important, but eventually even Chad Thunderschlong will probably fail the personality test if his personality is absolutely beyond redemption, awful, beyond all comprehension. And I'm sure you've all met people whose personalities didn't really gel with yours, or you've even had friends whose personalities made it difficult to be friends with them. I used to have this friend for almost 10 years who was one of the most disagreeable, stubborn, uncooperative, and at times aggressive people I'd ever known, at least in the context of being a friend. I had made accommodations to him again and again and again. And in almost 10 years, despite his very poor behavior sometimes towards me and others, he never apologized. I'd always have to figure out some way to frame it such that he didn't look bad. Just a really, unfortunately, in terms of personality, unpleasant person. Eventually, it got to be too much and, well, you could say we moved on. But I tried for almost 10 years. And I'm a pretty easygoing person. That's my personality. I'm pretty easygoing. I'm above average neurotic, but overall, I'm pretty easygoing. Don't get offended too easily. I'm pretty chill. Within limits, even fairly social. This guy, this former friend of mine, not social at all. Aggressive, antagonistic, just... Really, really crap personality, unfortunately, which he was aware of. He was never going to change. It's the way he was. So personality is very much a genetic thing for the most part. There are small environmental influences, but you're not going to turn a naturally neurotic person into a person with no worries whatsoever. You can mitigate it to some degree by changing the environment. Obviously, if you're in a hostile environment, it's going to bring out the worst of your personality typically, especially if you're neurotic. But hey, at least you can lift. At least you can lose weight. At least you can dress differently. There's nothing you can really do about your personality. Of course, you can become aware of it. But are you going to actively force yourself to do the opposite of what you're inclined to do? You could do that to a certain degree. But it's going to get tiresome and you're not going to want to do it after a while. I've seen people attempt it. It just doesn't work. In the end, your personality is going to win out because that's what you're naturally inclined to. Anyway, as always, thank you for tuning in. Special thanks to my patrons. You guys are the best, no doubt about it, as well as donors for sending me money on PayPal. Really appreciate it. And if you engage in the usual YouTube jazz, like the video, comment, subscribe, share, be much appreciated. The channel is shadow banned for the most part. And if I'm still alive, I'll check you out next time. Until then, may the gods watch over you. Take care. Bye-bye. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.